we can count them. So let's do that by sending length of the string. So now we know how many characters there are here. So now we can update that uh, field, which is our self.colorfulCharactersLabelText. And we'll do that by saying ns string, string with format, percent uh, d, colorful characters. And the argument is this thing we just calculated right here. Okay, so we got that. And let's do the exact same thing here with the outlined characters. And these are outlined characters. And we're going to, this is the ns stroke with attribute name. Okay, so we've went and found the characters that have the attribute, found out how many there are, uh, and then we created a string with format that displayed that into the label. Okay, this is not 100% correct because what if the color set on something is black? It's not a very colorful character. Or what if the stroke width is set, but it's set to zero? So this is, kind of, this is not a great uh, implementation, but it's simple. It gives you the idea. Now, one thing I like to do when I build a new MVC sometimes is test it. Okay, so I'm going to test this by adding a little view did load. Okay, so here's view did load. And what I'm going to do is self.text to analyze equals ns attributed string alloc init with string test attributes, and I'm going to put some test attributes in here, like ns foreground color, mm, green, and let's also put ns stroke width, call it minus three or something like that, right? So I have this. So now when this MVC appears, its view to load is going to set its own model, which is kind of a good testing thing. So let's go back and do that. And how would we do that test? So we got our storyboard here. What if we just pick this guy up and put it over here? Now when I run this app, it's going to go straight to this MVC and just bypass. This is not even going to be used right now because I'm just going to test this guy. So let's try that. See if I forgot anything. Oh, it's a simulator. I'll do this on the that thing is it there. Hope it's on the device. Okay. Okay, so the word test has four characters in it. So hopefully this is going to come up and say four colorful characters and four outline characters. So it's working. And I could go delete one of those attributes to make sure it says zero. I could change the word to be longer than test to make sure it says more than four. You see what I mean? See how I can kind of test this MVC to make sure it's working? So we're going to take our word for it, though. That's enough testing and that it's working. So I'm going to get rid of you did load. This is something you might put this in some sort of if def testing or something like that. You know how to do all that. Um, so you could do that as well. But I'm just going to del delete view did load. Uh, but I have a really nice working MVC right here that tells how many characters that are colored and outlined in a given piece of text. Well, now obviously I could use it from this guy. Let's move this guy back. And I'm going to put these inside of a uh, navigation controller. And I'm going to actually add a button to the navigation controller's bar when this one's visible that will segue over to this guy. Okay, so let's do that. Let's put it in navigation controller first. More space here. So I'm just going to embed in navigation controller, right? Boom, puts it in. Okay, it got a bar. Notice that this one did not get a bar. Why? Because there's nothing that segues to this yet that's inside this navigation controller. Another bad thing happened, though. I lost my CS193P rocks. Okay, and we know that CS193P does rock, and so we do not want it blocked like that. So one thing you can do is if something gets blocked like this, and you're like, oh, no, I've got to go fix that, we, you can just delete the navigation controller, and you'll be back where you were, or you could hit undo. So I'm actually going to get rid of this and put it in that gray bar instead. It's a perfectly reasonable uh, place for it to go. Maybe I'll move this down a little bit, too, to make sure it fits on there. So now let's go back and select this again and embed it. OK, so now we're back in here, right? And now I can put my CS193P rocks here. OK, perfectly reasonable place to put it. And I've got this. Maybe I would line that up there or there. 
pins on where the blue lines say. Okay, so I got that. Now I want to put a little button right here. So hopefully everyone remembers how to do that. We go all the way down to the bottom here, and we find bar button item, which is right here, and we drag it up. We put it right there. And this is going to show the stats, so I'm going to call this stats. All right. And now every time I click on stats, I want this MVC to slide in here and replace this one. So I'm going to control drag to here. Okay. Inside of navigation control, it's always push. Okay. There's our segue right here. If we click on this segue and go to the attributes inspector, you can see that it's a push segue. And we're going to call this show stats. Or even maybe better, analyze text. Okay, so we want to have something there that makes it clear what this segue does. It analyzes text in this case. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is prepare this MVC to come on screen, basically by setting its model to be the text that's in this text view, right? So we do that in here. The preparation for this to come on screen is done by this guy, because this guy is the guy causing the, uh, uh, the segue. So let's go here. As soon as we do this, we're on automatic, so we're going to see this guy's code. Here it is. Okay, you hopefully remember this code from last time. And let's go ahead and put the prepare for segue. We'll put it at the top because it works nicer for me. Uh, prepare for segue. All right, and all we have to do inside this prepare for segue is prepare for this particular segue. It's the only segue we have. So I'm going to make more space here. Actually, let's scroll over so you can see the segue in your mind while we're working on this. Um, let's click this back again. There we go. Okay, so in prepare for segue, what do we do? Well, like I said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're talking about this particular segue, which is the analyze text one. Now, of course, if you mistype this here, you're not going to get any warning or anything like that, or if you mistype it over there, and it's just not going to work because it's not going to prepare that MVC properly. So it's a little bit of a weakness, I think, of the way this system works, but it's just a debugging thing to make sure that your text here matches the te text there. Um, all right, so I know that when I'm um, segueing here, I need to use this text stats view controller. Okay, so it's okay for me to imp import that MVC's class in here because it's part of my view, almost. So you can kind of think of it, the stats as being part of the view of this other one, because it's sub, you know, a sub thing. So it's okay to do that, but I better make sure that the destination view controller that we're going to be segueing to is kind of text stats view controller. Okay? But if it is, then I'll create a little local variable here, text stats view controller <laughs> equals text stats view controller. This is actually not necessary, this what I'm doing right here, but I personally like to do it. Um, just because I like to have, uh, you know, the, a local variable that I can do things like tsvc.text to analyze equals. Okay, so here I'm preparing it. Okay, what does it need? It needs my body text. Okay, remember from last time, this text view right here is self.body, and the text storage is the NS mutable attributed string. This is an NS attributed string, but it's okay to assign that because a mutable string is a uh, regular attributed string. So this is perfectly legal. And so that's it. That's all that's necessary for us to do. And now if we run, you will see that first of all, we come up inside of a navigation controller. Okay, we still have our thing here. We can still select text. Uh, if we bring up the stats, there's zero colorful characters. I didn't color anything. When I hit back, it just dialect that text analyze. Let's go ahead and make a new one here, orange, and maybe some outline, and maybe some purple, and now stats, 14 colorful, 7 outlined, okay, working like a charm. Maybe we'll make a whole bunch of outlined here, okay, stats, 250, okay, so that's it. Everyone got that? So you will be doing this uh, on your homework. In fact, you'll be taking this and putting it inside of a tab bar controller. So you can be doing double duty. So let's talk about tab bar controller in the last five minutes that we have here. Any questions about that before I go on to tab bar controller? It all makes sense once you see it, right? There's a number of components to it, but they kind of fit together. All right, tab bar controller. 
Uh, here is uh, my favorite tab bar controller <laughs> application example, which is the clock app on iOS 7. You can see it has a tab bar across the bottom there and four tabs. Each of these four tabs is completely independent of the other. And that's the way MVCs inside a tab bar controller should be, completely independent of each other. If they're dependent, you probably want a navigation controller. Okay? Or if you're on the iPad, you might want to pop over or something like that. But on an iPhone, you probably want um, a navigation controller if you have a dependency. All right, so how does tab bar controller work? Very, very simple controller. It has a property called view controllers, which is an array of MVCs, of UI view controllers, basically the controllers of MVCs. And however many you have, that's how many little tabs you'll have on the bottom. Okay, and this, to create these connections in your storyboard, surprise, control drag. Okay, so you just drag a UI tab bar controller out and then just control drag to all the controllers that you want to be the various tabs. Now, what, how does the word timer and the little icon there appear? Well, the timer is going to be the UI view controller's title, the same thing that will appear in the top of a split view controller. And the uh, icon, there's actually a UI view controller property called uh, tab bar item. And inside there is the icon and a few other things like the badge, which is a little round circle with a no number or letter in it that you can uh, put on there. Uh, so that's how these things get set. But I'm not even showing you that here because usually you set them in the storyboard. Okay, you set this icon and this text in the storyboard. That's the best place to set these things. Now, what if you have more than four controllers, or more than five actually? Um, then what happens? Then a little more tab is gonna appear See it down there in the corner? And when you click that, there's gonna be this UI that's presented that allows you to, the user to pick which four they want down there. Swap them back and forth, okay, which is kinda of cool. And that uh, happens automatically. You put that more button on there, it just does it. It does it for you. So that's really cool. Okay, so I actually don't recommend UIs that have more than five tabs. Uh, I think this is a little cumbersome for users, but there are some places it would make sense. Uh, in this app, it's not bad. It kind of makes sense. This is the iPod app or whatever, your music app. So it kind of makes some sense here. Uh, but anyway, um, if you do need to do that, that's how it works. So let's, uh, in the last couple minutes here, look in Xcode and see what it looks like to make a tab bar controller. So this is the same thing I was just showing a few slides earlier, right? You see my, the navigation controller with the MVC that has the button, and then it just trans, you know, it segues to the next one. So I'm actually going to put this in a tab bar controller, so it's gonna be one of the tabs, and then I'm just gonna have like a blank view be the other one, okay? So see the tab bar controller there? I'm dragging it out. When you drag it out, it's gonna come along with two blank ones, okay? Two empty blank ones, which very much of the time you don't want. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna keep one of them, get rid of the other one just to show you how that's done. So when you drop it, uh, it might overlap other ones. Obviously, in the storyboard, you can drag these MVCs any way you want to make them look nice. If they happen to be connected by a segue or something, it'll automatically redraw that line for you as you move it. It's really quite nice in that way. Um, you can imagine that these storyboards get very large with 100 storyboards in there. How does it even work? Well, you, if you look down in the r lower right corner there, you'll see there's a magnifying glass. You can zoom in and out. Okay, zoom way out. If you had 100, you could see all 100 at the same time. Zoom in all the way to zooming all the way in on one view controller, and then you can edit that view controller. You can't edit a view controller itself unless you're zoomed in all the way. Okay. So here I've got two blank ones. I don't want them both, so um, I'm just going to select one of them, make it blue, as we talked about before, and hit delete, and it's gone. So I still got the other one. Okay. And now I'm going to hook that a navigation controller in there by control dragging. So I'm control dragging from the tab bar controller to the navigation controller. And uh, when you do this control drag, it's gonna put up this little segue thing. But when it's a tab bar controller, it only makes sense for this to be view controller. And I'm really surprised that Xcode just doesn't automatically do this. I'm not sure exactly why, because it would make no sense to pick push here. So why even offer that? I don't know. Um, anyway, you always want the one on the bottom when it's a tab bar controller, which means wire this up to the list of view controllers. 